today we're going to be going through memory lane. So we decided to invite people who were there right from the very, very beginning when we're starting the Tech Point Africa podcast. And yeah, that's not all we're doing in case you're wondering. We're going to be discussing some important stories. Uh, first of all, you're going to learn if your account is going to get frozen. Number two, you're going to understand why some startups are shutting down or just, yeah, after raising millions of dollars or supposedly raising millions of dollars. And finally, there's a surprise acquisition in the ecosystem and we're diving into it deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper. So yeah, stay tuned to the end of the show. First, welcome our guest in the studio, Muyuwa Anomalara. Please, a round of applause for them, please. Studio, 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 studio. <laughs> okay, so good to see you guys. Good to see you too. too. Good to see you, Muyuwa. Yeah. Hi, how you guys do it? Yeah. Very well. So, okay, so Muyuwa is, Muyuwa is still part of the house. So, but let's, <laughs> let's, let's find out, like, everything, uh, anything you want to share with us. Okay. Okay, um, it's good to be here again. I mean, I'm having this nostalgia feeling. Mm. You know, the the episodes I was part of um, in the um, Tech Point podcast, it was just voices. Yeah. It was no just video. voices, no yeah. videos, but it's good to be here. And, you know, we are seeing the faces behind yeah. the voices, yeah. So it's really good. Um, it's been quite an interesting journey. I mean, we're having some conversations before we came in here. And, okay, so I'm supposed to answer... Yeah, no, no, no. I just thank you. I, I just set you up with that. <laughs> <laughs> this thing. But yeah, if, if you're wondering, Omolara um, was. Uh, so if you hear Nifemi and Emmanuel, Omolara, um, then Tej, then yeah. Doka, we're like the group of troublemakers that came into Tech Point in 2019. And Omolara um, was the biggest troublemaker. All what really do you mean? Up. You're the one that always fighting. Whether you or Nifemi, those two of you. I'm I think not I sure. was the one. You're the one, right? <laughs> Good. So. Yeah, it's, it's been an amazing uh, experience. It was an amazing time. And yeah, good to have you back in yeah. the studio. So, Muiwa, okay, so let me try to... You, I know you've answered this question before when you came to the podcast a few yeah. episodes ago, but can we delve a little bit deeper into how all of this started, the podcast and all of that? Yeah, it was just a random thing. Like, okay. I, like I said before, it started as an experiment. Somebody suggested it. Mm. Like, oh, why don't you just start a podcast? And then sent a few samples. I think they sent one from BBC and a few others. And we kind of like try to fashion it after the BBC one because BBC mm. is a news platform, so we take news. And there was just like snappy. There's, they have different podcasts, but this particular one was like three minutes, four minutes, or less than that. If mm. one reporter or two, they just reel down the news, the headlines, and gives you the give you the five W's and H. Mm. And with background music playing, and that's all. And yeah, then they encouraged you to visit BBC to learn more. And so that was what the very first episode was. I, I believe the first episode was Stage and Titi Lola. I'm Titi Lola. I'm Stage. This is Tech Point Africa podcast. This week on Tech Point Africa. Subscribers can go and look for that. Mm. Yeah, the first episode was Stage and Titi Lola, and they just went back and forth. Oh, yeah, interesting. Very, I think I remember. I it was remember very robotic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, uh, they were like, okay, no, we don't like this format. <laughs> Let's try free form. And so we, now we then moved to free form. And mm. that's how it just went to different stages at some point. Uh, Carol reached out. Mm. Carol was uh, like our sound engineer. He just like he just liked, was a fan of tech points. He had okay. a couple of episodes and I was like, hey, because we're recording them with like, uh, I think we had this uh, lapel. Okay, lapel. This boya. Boya. <laughs> boya is a walk, I mean. <laughs> Yeah, boya. Uh, the sound wasn't that great. Yeah, so, I mean, those that are complaining about sound now, I don't, I don't see it, but anyway. <laughs> you, you need to hear the sound back then. <laughs> so, we're like, oh, I can help you make the sound better. And then he, he came... Just appeared one day with equipment and mics and everything. I think, I, think I remember that day. Yeah, yeah. yeah just and those episodes, uh, yeah, the sound was very good. Those episodes, yeah, anyway. So, yeah, he came did that. Kar Karuna, he has, he has a... Yeah, Jack 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 <laughs> Jack <Bad. laughs> but yeah, yeah, he was mm. very instrumental. In, yeah, in it's, it's, I think I remember all those times. And uh, I think <laughs> right now, I just... Uh, wonder what uh, other directions we could have taken the podcast, but maybe we will leave that for yeah. probably future conversations. Yeah. But 
Um, um, your first time in the mic, how how did you feel? Like I was very nervous <laughs> because you know the way my does is that he just come and just comes into the interior and I say, "You are the next one." I'm like, <laughs> "What am I supposed to do? <laughs> what am I supposed to say?" So he comes in and I say, "Okay, these are the stories we are sharing, we are talking about, and all of that." So. Mm-hmm. I'm like, am I supposed to read all of this and just come and just talk freestyle? But as the time went on, I became, you know, yeah, yeah. I mean, you, you looked the part, so you, yes, you exactly. So I heard the fact that, aside the fact that people tell me that I have the voice, yeah, I have the voice, and people want to hear me speak and all of that. So I just kind of like blended into the whole thing, and mm. it went well till I left Tech Point. Ah. Yeah. Uh, interesting, interesting. So, yeah, for those, you had three names, right? Uh, we've confirmed two for next week, Titi and Tej, the people that hosted okay. the very first episode. We'll be inviting them next week. Uh, we're still debating who we host that one. Because <laughs> 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 she's look at her there. But it's fine, it's fine. Okay, you can't see her, but it's fine. So, but of Carol, right now, he's probably still sleeping or... Okay. That is if he st- still sleeps in general. <laughs> <laughs> well, Carol, if you are listening to this, it's a challenge. Let's do this. Let's talk. And I know there are a bunch of stories. I heard Carol talked about when he first heard the podcast and what made him reach out. Mm. I think you should come and share it yeah. on live camera if he has the mind. So, <laughs> 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 okay, guys. Uh, I think it's. I think at some point, say let's do video. Like yeah. why? Why the move from? Just audio yeah. to video. The idea was just like, honestly, so I mean, when we we're just audio, the numbers were were okay, especially pre, is it pre-COVID. Pre-COVID, yeah, I guess. Yeah, yeah. it was pre-COVID. Yeah, yeah. it picked that it picked that COVID anyway. But yeah, but pre-COVID, the numbers were they were okay. But then after everybody came back to walking and mm. all of that, the numbers were tanking. I was like, okay, what can we do next? What was the next thing we can use to like make it more out there, like get it, yeah, promote it. I'm like, okay, let's do video. But then you start, you know, have to start thinking. Do you have the equipment? Do you mm. have the expertise? I'm like, no, I don't want to think about this. Thing. Let's just do it. Mm. If it's ugly, let it be ugly. <laughs> I'm, sh- I'm sure the first video episode is still okay. Wait, we had two phases of video. Yeah, so one the first with one, table. The first one was when yeah. we were, uh, yeah, we're still in like, our office in Anthony. Uh, we used the GoPro and all. yeah, there was yeah. one on the table. There was one that we used the GoPro. Yeah. Uh, that that's one phase. The second phase was when we started using this studio. Yeah, you need to see the first video. <laughs> really <laughs> I, terrible. I think we used phones to record that that first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Video. Or some camcorder. Yeah, yeah. camcorder. Really time. terrible. Yeah. But I mean, just the idea is you just keep improving. You know, that's a testament to consistency. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I, I remember I was dragging with you then, like, ah, it's tech points. Take points. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, processes. The, the truth is, we are not, we are, it's not like we are CNN or China. Do, do you know how it takes, how much it costs to get one camera? Like, high time. quality camera that you yeah. see on TV. <laughs> yeah, we don't have that kind Cost of money. <laughs> forget, forget the t- impact tech points has. No, we don't have that kind of money. <laughs> we pri- there are other things to prioritize. Uh, so, I mean, those things cost. Uh, both load of mo- both load of money, so it's not mm. yeah. So I mean, you just start with what you have, and improve. Just keep improving. Just being able to. I mean, when people look at people like uh, MKBHD, for example, yeah, go and check his face video. Like horrible, horrible, horrible. Look at Mr. Beast to check his face video. So I mean, I think it's all part of the story, actually. Yeah, yeah. it's all part of the process, yeah. and it's, it shows that there is a line of growth in everything that is going mm-hmm. on, and when you get to that peak. If you eventually get to the peak, it all makes up the story of how you got there in the first place. I mean, yeah. nobody just comes out of the blues and blow like that. Even if you look at, even get. if you look at, sorry, sorry, I told you don't. Even if you look at, uh, like big media houses that you yeah. look at, like mm-hmm. Channel, CNN. If you check their face, just that in Nigeria we don't keep records. Yeah. If you go on YouTube, you can check like for like ABC, CNBC, all those kind. If you check their faces news studio or whatever you just be like this is <laughs> it's terrible so okay. although yes also, also of course technology at the time also mm-hmm. there's a factor but even them you find out that they even where they are now they still have a a goal in front where they where they want to be yeah you know, so you just keep improv- improving absolutely okay all right, so uh, if if I keep asking questions, and I think we will not we will not even delve into today's stories. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I think we should move to 
uh, the stories for today and we can keep chipping in one or two things uh, at different intervals. So yeah. don't don't be angry if I digress once in a while. Maybe I remember one question I was supposed to ask or something. Yeah. But yeah, uh, first things first, they said, not they said, the CBN released the secular that from 2024, I think April 2024, mm-hmm. we'll be freezing accounts without NINs and BVNs. And that's a big issue considering all of the things that have been going on in the techs, in the fintech or financial services space. So in the past few weeks, we've had so and so bank lost billions of naira to fraud in the tech mm-hmm. space. This bank lost, uh, this bank blocked money s- transfers to three new banks. Mm-hmm. And the consensus was all this money that has been lost in the tech space or in the financial services space is going out through two major new banks, Pampe and OP. And uh, from what from what I found out during that time, it's saying that the NIN was supposed to have been enforced for by all these fintech companies a few months ago, but nobody followed that, mm-hmm. and CBN did not enforce it. But now the CBN is about to enforce it, and I have concerns. So, but let me hear what you guys think about this particular issue in the first place. Yeah, I mean, I think it's a is overdue. Okay. So I mean, yeah, I want to put myself in the shoes of like a a fintech, a fintech company that has raised venture capital, and has to always signal growth, and so you prioritize tier one accounts. That's accounts that don't require any any form of KYC, yeah. uh, identification, like just your phone number or your email. You just just and verify, right? And then that means I can put anybody's name, open an account in anybody's name and use that to collect money and move money around. And when you hear them throwing numbers like, oh, they have so number of accounts. I think the average fintech probably has more users than the average <laughs> Nigerian <laughs> bank. Yeah. Right. And then we are always like kind of giving Nigerian banks some flack for how maybe they're a bit slow about some things, some things that require you to come physically. So, for an example, an example, for example, my, my wife opened her account recently for a new job she got. And she was able to open it online. But she was, and she was receiving money in it. But she was not able to access the money hmm. for months. Exactly. Because the bank was like, no, you have to come physically before you can start accessing the money. And so, I mean, mother of two babies even though I assist, there's not enough time to go to the bank. So eventually she went to the bank and was able to submit whatever they needed and everything. Mm. And then she tried to attempted a first transfer and they called her. Like the customer care of the bank called her and said, uh, we're trying to confirm that you just attempted this transfer. Blah, 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 blah. Like ask her a few questions, verified who she was. When she said, when she confirmed everything and they're satisfied, immediately the call ended, the transfer went through. Interesting. Now, all these processes, they cause some kind of friction. Mm-hmm. You complain, right? But there is a reason behind them. True. So, when the CBN is saying they want to block accounts without uh, BVN or NIN, right? The initial reaction is to start complaining about things like that. Mm-hmm. How, sl- but then if you know how much money is, how much money people have lost, right, to things like this, where people are opening accounts in your name and can transfer money and move around, then you understand the reasoning behind it. Then the question now is, how do you find the balance? I think that is what fintech startups should. That's that's why they are the innovators. Mm-hmm. You need to find a way to find that balance. There needs to be innovation around. That I don't know how the likes of Money Point does it, but there needs to be innovation around that. Mm. I mean, to be fair, even Money Point could that they they don't have as much issues as yeah, uh, Bumpy exactly. And Kuda, but there are still concerns with them, right? So there's the fact that so this one is not outright. Uh, I won't call it outright fraud, but say you transfer money to an Instagram vendor and the Instagram vendor does not respond to you. Mm-hmm. 
if you report to the bank, they will first of all freeze the account, then tell the person to come. Let's settle the issue. But right now, I don't know if it's a policy change, but right now, these new banks, they don't freeze the account. They will yeah. tell you to go and bring the police report. Mm. Yeah. And when they are telling you to bring police report, they are basically telling you, oh, man, forget that money. Because police report is like another... That's stress on it. You spend, you spend, you <laughs> spend, you spend how much? Right. How, much how much did you send to the? <laughs> you spend how much you? So, but I don't know if you've experienced any of these things I'm mentioning. Well, not directly. Okay. My sister works with a certain bank in Nigeria, so she gets to resolve most of these issues with um, these new banks and all of that. So one of the issues that she always complains about is the fact that anytime someone does a transaction. And, you know, people come to the bank a lot to complain. So they make some transactions and they tell you to send it to a Pampe or an Ope account. Fraud, actually. So immediately this money goes into this account. Trust me, there is no how you can track it. It mm. is not coming out again. That's the end. Mm. That's the end. But if it's a normal traditional bank, right, you can always freeze the account like you said freeze the account, call the person, you know, there is a way they go, go about this whole thing. What if it is any of these new banks? The money is not coming out. Mm. The money is not coming out. So I think this might be a good policy for our own good because a lot of people has lost lots of money. Lots of money. I mean, I hear a lot of stories. I can't even start recounting all of them. I hear a lot of these stories. So yeah, I think it's a good initiative actually. So, so Though we might need we might need to take some time to adjust to it, you know. I think the news even said that people that their NIN has been verified, they need to revalidate the account. They need to revalidate. Yes. Mm -hmm. They need to revalidate the NIN. So everybody? Everybody. Like, yes. Including people yes. who are Yes. Yeah. <laughs> 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 we need to all revalidate our NIN. Ah, no. And the fact that we need to go to the bank. I mean, on Monday, I'm on leave. On Monday, I spent half of my day at the bank. Don't let me mention the name of the bank. <laughs> <laughs> I spent, I spent half of my day at the bank. I'm like, okay, so this thing could have easily taken... Okay, I sent the money to another account and the money didn't go through. So I had to go to the bank to complain. And I spent half of the day. And there were no even chairs that I could even sit. I stood there. Uh, my eyes were turning me at some point. So ah, you didn't buy a ground like I said. <laughs> 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 so, so I was wondering, I wanted to ask you, like, is okay. there, maybe you know, like your sister has, is there like a policy that is enabling traditional banks to be able to freeze mm. those monies and new banks can't do that? I think so. I think so. I think because it's intra-bank transactions, mm. you can always call maybe the person mm. involved or something or, call, or something. The okay. yeah, call the account manager to tell them that, oh, this is what is happening with this account. Mm. We need to, mm. you know, find a way around. There's like, a more yes, there's a, yes, compared banks. to yeah. all these new banks. Yeah. Interesting. Because, I mean, there's a case for putting friction to cop fraud, but mm -hmm. for fintechs, right, I, uh, I get what you guys are saying, but there's a particular platform I wanted, I, when I wanted to get a new device. I wanted to pay instrumentally. And my regular customer, you guys know them. <laughs> they, I didn't like the terms of their deal. So I wanted to use a different platform. Then this platform started asking me for this, asking me for that, asking me for that. On top, I said, I'm not doing it again. <laughs> Two weeks later, they messaged me like, Alpha, we see, noticed you started this process, but you didn't complete. I said, no, you're... Oh, I, I know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> okay, when, okay, when you see this is too much. Kilo yeah, day. It's the same experience I've had with them. I know what you're talking about. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, we I don't mean... don't mention them, but yeah. yeah come on. But, but that's why they will not have the kind of growth that we are hearing other fintechs having. Right. Yeah, but they might not have as much fraud yeah. problems. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, but they are, it's like their compliance team is just hardcore. They don't, they just want yeah, everything shit. to be done the right way. Even though they don't even make you come physically. Yeah. But, they yeah. Are, but they, then, I mean, this is not an ad for, I'm not, okay, I don't want to mention, so it's not I'm promoting them, but I've already mentioned one of them. I see that they found a way, because speaking to innovation around what I was talking about, they found a way to kind of do some of these verifications with third party, either it's third party tools or tools they build themselves, mm. where you like turn on your camera, 
You see okay, you live. Okay, okay, okay. Just to confirm that you are the person that you, you say you are, they probably use air and match it with the record on your BVN or whatever. Yeah. So, I mean, I've opened an account like that with one of these new banks, a business account for, for TechPoint, one of these new banks, and everything was done in order under 30 minutes. And within 12 hours, account was ready, all the documents were submitted, verified, and all of that. I did not confirm whether it was proprietary or a third-party service. Mm. I know there are services like that in Nigeria and Africa. Yeah. Right. So, is there a way CBN themselves can then embrace some of these things? Right. So, yes, maybe they, they may not fully understand what's going on there, the tech around it. But if they can embrace it, create a f- framework policy for maybe verifying or accrediting, licensing mm. some of these platforms and then integrate them into traditional banks. Maybe it might make their work easier. I think so. I mean, mm. there are. Oh, there, are, there are lots of um, verification platforms in Nigeria, like Doja, like Preemly, like yeah. um, Smile Identity and yeah. all of that. Yeah. So verify, verify, me. Yeah. verify me. Yeah, yeah. so I, I'm sure that there should be a way to, you know, collaborate. and. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, I agree. I agree. So, yeah, you, you guys can check out the video. I'm linking it to it again because this seems to be a recurring theme in the podcast, talking about fraud and all of that. So, the video... The interview I did with uh, the CEO of Verify Me, we talked a lot about this balance, the need to innovate fast and acquire customers and the need to be compliant and do the proper KYC verifications that you need to. So, yeah, just, just check that out. And uh, this, the next story, I'm going to lump the two of them together a little bit because they're kind of related. So, two companies that raised money, lots of money, no matter how you look at it, it's a lot of money. One decided to shut down and the other decided to shut down their external operations and focus on the Nigerian market. So Lydia, a Nigerian fintech company, focus on credit. Now, yeah, I think I ref- referenced credits in the last talk- uh, topic. So it's focused on credit collections and all those issues around borrowing money that you refuse to pay back. So they launched in Nigeria... Czech Republic and Poland, but they are shutting down their operations in two European countries to focus on the Nigerian market. Then Pivo, a fintech for logistics and supply chain, has shut down completely after raising $2 million, in quotes. So, yeah, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> Lydia, I understand. You can always try to focus on your strengths, focus on the market that you think is most promising. I've seen some companies do that. But for Pivo, the fintech company, they supposedly raised $2 million and they are shutting down again. This is the second time we're hearing something like this. Zazu said they raised $2 million. What was Zazu? The name, the name was probably the beginning of their problems, but <laughs> let me not go there. But yeah, they said they raised. I'm saying they said because I'm not so sure again. Mm. Mm. And they said they are shutting down due to fundraising challenges after two million dollars i mean in one year i mean we are okay yeah let's let's hear from a founder like maybe you can't I've, really, I've, I've never i've never done that kind of level of raising anyway so <laughs> i can't speak to that i mean i mean i'm more we've been bootstrapping for how long yeah there's so much going on that we don't really know and i really wish i, I i'm seeing like i like the sentiment i'm seeing on twitter where People are seeing some founders should start talking. What's going like they should start sharing mm. their stories. We don't share failure stories enough. Enough. Or maybe at all safe. Yeah. One of the biggest that time, I mean, it was uh Oyape. Oyape, Oyape. Oh yeah. That one, uh, I don't want to talk about <laughs> what's what's going on there. <laughs> if you read between the yeah. underneath the underneath. Mm. Okay. But yeah, I mean, there was one about this, you know, Francophone founder that is on a platform that he had this streaming platform and he shared a very deep dive into why why this platform failed after two years. He's on, he's on tech points. Mm. Oh, cool. Yeah. So that's like the last time I've not, I don't remember when last I saw anybody really sharing their, okay, of course, then Laser P, he went on the Flip, the Flip podcast. I've not listened to it, but I don't know whether he really shared uh, went into it so we don't know, really know what's going on because so for me it just seems weird that you raise two million dollars and 
in one year you are and then some people are saying okay like the is it people or people they are saying that okay lending business is hard in nigeria okay yes it's hard but that's why not everybody's doing it and that's why you are the experts and you raise two million dollars to, to do it so i don't think that's an excuse however there, there are other things coming up people are saying when maybe sometimes i'm starting to rethink this when people say they don't re, they are shutting down because they're not able to raise. I'm starting to rethink what that means based on the sentiments I'm seeing on Twitter. Like mm. people, some people are saying maybe they never even actually raised the amount they announced. Mm. Right? Another angle. And so because they were still waiting for investors to, to wire money. So when they when they say they, they didn't raise them, um, they are shutting down because of lack of funds. It's not because they they had spent the one they raised, it's because they had not even gotten all the the raised. We don't know for sure whether that's the case anyway, right? So there are so many things that could be happening. A third one that could be happening that is sinister, but I'm not again just I'm not saying this is what is happening. I'm just giving all the possible. It could just be that this was just a case of money laundry, mm. right? This happens. This happens too. People, it happens. You can't deny it. Again, I'm not saying this is the case in yeah. the case of a, a, a pivo, right? So there are many things that. And it's, it's making me rethink. I, I mean, I've been battling with this a lot. We, we, the media created this monster. Why people think announcing funding is a milestone. Yeah. Right? Because that's what the audience wants to hear. They want to, and people hear that and they feel like running a startup is easy and oh, it's just about raising money and all of that. Maybe it's time to start toning down on things like that. TechCrunch started it. We all followed. Why do we announce funding? Like, I don't know. Because the pressure to announce funding, if you are telling me that for some people, the VC has not wired money. Because VC2 is raising money. And maybe the, the LP VC is raising money from... Has not even wired money. Has <laughs> not wired money. <laughs> <laughs> so VC is giving excuses. Look at the, case, the recent case. There was a recent case of a... Uh, did, we, did we report it? A, an investor that was defrauding startups, telling them he will invest we, in them. <laughs> and they keep, keep posting them. I don't think we reported that. No, keep posting them. Uh, because it's still under investigation. Yeah. So... Like there, there's a lot going on that we have no idea. As to th- as for Lydia, I've not really been following what's going on with Lydia, but I know that Tunde came in there and uh, exing uh, their OGs, the co-founders of uh, well, debatably, arguably, debatably co-found okay, co-founders, but they were hired. That's just the truth. We all know they were hired, uh, co-founders of Jumia, <laughs> and but then uh, they moved on from that and started the uh, they first started Ace. Oh, yeah, that's true. A logistic yeah. startup. Startup, yeah. And they found out that. I think what Tunde kind of keeps doing is that, so you, you are in e-commerce, but you find out that there is underlying infrastructure issues that will not allow e-commerce to work. So you try to solve one of those problems, which is logistics. Mm. And then you find out that there's still another underlying problem. <laughs> for mm, which is credits. Uh, credits, and, you know, and they moved on to that. So but I've not really been following them. They've been, they don't make noise. They are mostly B2B anyway. Uh, but it's really it's really interesting to me that they are coming they are fo- deciding to focus on the Nigerian market because everybody's always about the risk the risking your the risking your this and expanding but then again the markets they expanded to uh, then Check. Easter, Eastern Europe. they are the they are, I, I like to call them the Nigerians the, Poland is like the Nigeria of Europe <laughs> they are like Nigerians in every way culturally and everything so yeah I really don't have much to say about Lydia. What if it's a it's a leadership problem for these startups that yeah. are yeah mm, shutting down? A, yes. What if it's a leadership problem? So, but how how would you define leadership? Uh, this leadership problem in context now because they say some startup founders in, for to be successful you need to be an asshole or something or it startup could be founders. It's management of funds, like okay. Mima said. Okay. I mean, we've heard of stories of um, startup fund founders that. They get investment and the next thing they are doing is they are buying house in Lake Heath <laughs> <laughs> or they are buying cars and all of that. 2020 20 model or 2022 models. I mean, we have stories like that on Twitter. You see yeah. really different you stories like that on Twitter. So, in, yes, you know, just wedding. do any out with the money <laughs> and all of that. So, that could also be part of the problem. Ah, okay. So, I think this is at this point i i think we've asked ourselves this question before but we keep coming back to it 
um, I mean, someone said if we stop funding news, won't that also affect the ecosystem in general? Funding to the ecosystem in general. If we stop it, it's it will now have this feeling that maybe nothing is going it's on. Happening. No, no investment is coming in. So, is it a case of okay, maybe stop funding news or and just have a database of stats exactly. that are raising? Have a database. Maybe a section on your site. People can just go and check. Mm. Uh, we do our reports already yeah. regularly. You can go and check the reports. Uh, Intel points. Why are we announcing the fundraising? Like, just I it's just weird. <laughs> I think that would even reduce the pressure on founders trying to be out there and saying that oh we raised this money or oh, I don't know no, if you but, understand what I'm trying to say. Ha- we've come to see fundraising as this milestone. Yeah. See any fundraise on Twitter on Instagram. People are even congratulating you. But the you. headache, <laughs> the headache that it is. First of all, you are diluted. You've given away so much of the company that belongs to you, mm. and then there's now more pressure. You're now answering to more people. So why why are they congratulating you? Honestly, it's, <laughs> it's funny. I mean, the founders have congratulated privately when they raise money. They are, forget that thing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> forget that thing. <laughs> That's just the because truth. Because he's giving out so much and. Uh. It's and then even announcing is also creating this uh, because I find myself often having to educate people like people here okay first of all even for me because people see that I mean you said it before you stopped sharing fundraising news on your whatsapp status because people start billing you ah. because, <laughs> because they don't they just I, I don't know how they think <laughs> but just because I announced fundraising that somebody raised money doesn't mean I'm their friend <laughs> And I know them. <laughs> Why should that even and, be the thoughts in the first place? So I have money. And then <laughs> even the person that raised, people just think that because they raised, they have money automatically. Is their money? Yes. B- again, because some founders then approach it that way. That's those ones that don't have corporate governance, mm. right? But you yeah, are based on the salary. It's not your money. Okay. People, people today still think that because Pistak was sold for two hundred million, mm. that is how much Shola and Ezra, uh, Ezra got. <laughs> 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 so all the people that invested the pay uh, pay stack, then they will not collect their share of the two hundred million. <laughs> 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 how, much, how much how much equity did Shola and uh, Ezra. Ezra have at the time that of acquisition? And then even if even if it was ten percent they had, it's possible they had less than that. Mm. But even if it was ten percent they had, which is twenty million, how much of that was cash? Some of that was converted into stock. Some of that could be mm-hmm. stock in, mm-hmm. in Stripe. Stripe that acquired them. You know so. More focus on those kind of things that educate people. Mm. So, so I'm talking to I'm talking to ourselves. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I, yeah, I, I, I get we the have, message. We have a role to play. I get the message. I get the message. I mean, once in a, me, I've even done it. So, like, once I was 2020, 2021, you see funding, you be like, when I want to go cash out my own now. <laughs> 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 but yeah, um, talking about acquisitions, you mentioned the Pesta acquisition, landmark acquisition, but we had a surprise acquisition this week when i saw the news yesterday i was like what showed new family she was like what so beats mama has acquired pd beat mama cryptocurrency blockchain focused uh, cross-border payment startup then payday the self-proclaimed neobank for the gig economy that is according to new family's article <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> Yeah, Muiwa, can you give us some of the details you found about this? Uh, yeah, story? yeah. Um, as everybody has, well, unless you're living under a rock, as long as you are interested in the tech space, yeah, or right. even if you're a payday customer or Bitmama or Chinjira customer. I stopped using payday. Why? Yeah. Okay, please. Let a lot of people stopped. <laughs> yeah, she'll share experience. <laughs> yeah, but hopefully maybe this will help resolve that. Yeah, Bitmama has acquired uh, payday. And according to a source I spoke to, is practically a done deal, mm. right? Um, their estimate was 85% done just to sign a few things and all of that. They've already um, um, taken on board some of the employees of PD. Not all, but according to the source, um, which this sounds counterintuitive, but PD has very good investment in customer service. Do they? I don't know because I don't use pay the much. You know, what, what, I'm just asking. Hold on, what I know, <laughs> what I know is that before this issue started, people kind of liked pay this customer service. Is that right or wrong? Before the issue started. When did the issue start? I want to know. When they started having issues with uh, 
you know all the underlying issues yeah, there. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I mean, I tried using. Yeah, there was a lot of positive sentiments about PD. If you check Twitter, when then, it just started, I yeah, remember. Yeah, if you check Twitter, then yeah, there was a lot of positive, positive sentiments. sentiments. Yeah, but so yeah, down the line, just yeah. But if a product is struggling, how much what, no. what can mm-hmm. customer service do? Okay, I think I remember what happened. I yeah. was seeing a lot of positive sentiments. Mm-hmm. Then I went to use the product. I'm like, did they pay you guys to be <laughs> praising PD? That's what I thought. That mm. could be. And it was not just me. A friend of mine wanted to use PD. And the next thing, he came into my room like, Ima, all this una, sorry, I'm speaking <laughs> pigeon English. <laughs> all these stuff that people are writing about, what are they doing? <laughs> because, okay, so let me just leave it at that. Yeah. <laughs> so, but anyway, this source, very close to the matter, says they actually have investment in customer service. Okay. There may be some disconnect maybe because of the products. Anyway. Mm. So, customer service, engineering and marketing, they actually already like as at last week two weeks ago they interviewed some of them already mm. and they already started working with Changera but not all okay. of them not all of mm. them what okay. about the CEO so there's away. no they, they did not confirm what is happening with the CEO but my guess is there's a very very capable CTO already at Abitmama Abit Mama. and the CEO is a technical founder so mm. they probably have no need of, need of him Maybe you get stock, because the the confirmation is that the deal was all stock, not no, cash. No cash. Mm. All stock, and I mean, who would want stock in Bitmama? Because what Bitmama is doing, they don't make as much noise. But one yeah. people, one thing people should realize is that in this in the wake of this crypto crash, they've been running very smoothly, smoothly, and that's because they've early enough. I mean, I remember roots. Um, Roots Iselema, CEO at TechPoint Beauty. The interview she did that uh, with Bolu on, yeah, on yeah, beyond, this, uh, beyond trading. Beyond yeah. trading, they've already started thinking about crypto beyond trading, right? Mm-hmm. So uh, you know, stable uh, using stable coins and all of that to empower, like abstracting it for the user because most of these crypto startups they are always putting the crypto and blockchain in your face. People don't care, just solve my problem. Like so, being able to abstract it away from the user. So I think the the acquisition is aligned because PD has customers, they have their virtual, although Changera does have their own virtual card service anyway. So, but I think for them, the major reason why the acquisition uh, went through is again, because they've seen investment in customer service, um, the customer base that they have, then even the kind of, you know, PD was like the official Starlink, Starlink uh, partner in partner. Nigeria. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So, so some kind of deals and network they probably have there. Then there will be some things that w- I mean we are following up with. This is a developing story. Yeah. There will be some things they saw because people don't understand on the surface they're like, why are they acquiring a struggling business, right? So, but the user base, customer service, maybe the tech. They've seen some things in the tech that they want to incorporate because I know that Changera, which is a product of Bitmama, is launching a product very soon. Um, Actually, it's actually in silent testing right now. But they are launching it in um, January. That will help businesses. Because most of the solutions we see with cross-border payments is mostly personal, personal. Yeah. This is for businesses. Yeah. Right. This, that, is, that this is a need that sense. even we have. You know. So there so there must be something. I mean, again, following up. And as more, when we get more of this, we'll definitely share. But there is something they saw that we, don't, we that don't have access to the internals. Uh, because they uh, why would they just acquire any and al- also yeah the other question I hope I've told you on everything if I haven't please forgive me but you can read the article um, and that question that is coming up is because a lot of people say payday is owing them yeah, they yeah. have funds with locked with payday so that's another question on people's minds and we're definitely following up on that too we should have updates by the end of the week or Latest next week, what is Big Thomas' plan okay. for people whose funds are being held with PD? Okay, makes sense, makes sense. So, I'm all right, before I say anything, do you want to share any of your experience with PD? <laughs> let, me not, let me not say anything today. Do I really want to, want to do this? I don't know, but I've not really had a good experience with PD. I've mm. used it once or twice, like successful transactions, mm. maybe once or twice, but then I just don't like the fact that my cards get disabled oftentimes uh, when I want to use it. Mm, so okay. I just go in there, I want to make a transaction and I just see that my card has been disabled and I don't get any notification as a way and I'm beginning to wonder 
what happened okay. and also because i think i need to pay again to get my card yeah. reactivated or something like that i need to pay right so all of those experiences i just and this is the same thing with i don't know if i can mention cheaper mm. cash <laughs> mm. they me i think i've even just left all yeah, of these interesting i haven't i've have not had issues with them I've had issues with cheaper cash too. What specific issue? What specific issue? So it's always the fact that maybe um, my accounts get deducted, cash gets deducted from my account. Mm -hmm. And because my card is already on um, Apple Store, there are some things like maybe iTunes. I do not use iTunes. Mm. And because my card is already on cheaper cash, it gets deducted. And I'm wondering why. I don't know if it's just peculiar to me or other people experience this. You might need to... Have you canceled the subscription? Yeah. I've, I don't even know how because I never subscribed to it in the first place. You might need to tweak some things in your uh, Apple, Apple services. I don't know. That's why I, I don't know if this is a... Okay. If this is an issue peculiar to me or other people are experiencing this sort of issue too. Yeah, so I don't think they've had more, much issues with cheaper cash. Yeah, it's just yeah. their rates that can be. Yes, <laughs> their, yeah. their rates, rates is also another thing. But then I don't mind because... If it, it works, works, if it works, this is not a paid, don't mind. It's not a paid ad, <laughs> but it just works. <laughs> yeah, so I think right and now. And I also like the fact that, sorry, I also like the fact that they allow you receive uh, with, via crypto. Mm. Oh, okay. So yeah, you can yeah. receive USDT, yeah. USDT and all of that and then use it to fund your, uh, dollar, uh, card. your dollar card. I also just don't like the fact Which that. Which is what changes are those two anyway. Sorry. That maybe I'm trying to make a payment and. Maybe after the payment does not go through once or twice, my cards get disabled. Ah. Oh yeah, that's it. I think you, you yeah. You wrote my about card that. gets disabled, so I have to pay you another three k or three five to so get another card the, the, or to reactivate the card. Why? So that's you stripping me off now. <laughs> wait, first, <laughs> no, wait. <laughs> <laughs> so the issue is for every time that payment does not go through, they are losing money. Oh. And their providers are penalizing them for that. Mm -hmm. So they have to protect themselves at some point. They were taking these losses throughout last year when there yeah. was money. Using investors' money. Using investors' uh, money to pay the losses. Payday too was doing the same thing. But when investor money dried up, their eyes were open. The eyes of the understanding. <laughs> <open>. <laughs> so and that's that's what happened. So yeah, there there are lots of issues I there. Think that makes sense. Yeah, then pay the customer service, and I think they've had a lot of issues with people trying to impersonate them mm. on social media. So mm. they, there's always a, if you have, I think on average, if you have an issue with a pay the customer service, is you're probably not talking to a pay the customer really? service professional. You're talking to a fraudster that is trying to defraud you because wow. they create their accounts in such a way that it okay. looks like the original pay the why, did, why can't they just get a verified account? They have a verified account, but I don't know if well, people don't pay attention. Mm. They have a verified why account. Why even with the verified account? With this X thing, anybody can be verified. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let's not even uh, go gold, there. Gold verification. <laughs> gold well, verification. Well, well, except that. Accept that. Uh, per month to except pay. that. Yeah, yeah. But if it's the normal blue tick, anybody can get that. With 5K. Mm. With yeah, 5K, yeah. anybody I think can get all that. All these things, I think I had this conversation when before Elon Musk brought all this... Um, Mm. blue i'll be golden uh, verification yeah. but yeah that's interesting so you can check tech point africa to look at some of the stories we discussed today and of course like we were said we're following up on some of the questions you probably have why is beat mama acquiring a struggling or seemingly struggling a fintech company and what happens to your funds and another conversation is people even have funds with changera that they've not gotten so oh, yeah i've seen co complaints about that yeah too. so What's going to happen? Yeah, Ginger, I just reminded me another KYC that made me abandon the registration process. Is a mm. Very strong KYC process. Like, <laughs> I'm not doing. <laughs> That's different from. <laughs> yeah, but again, again, we're talking about that balance. Yeah, the protecting balance. against fraud and and all of that. Because you, I don't know. For in their own case, I don't know. We don't hear reports, but we don't know whether they have the same issues with chargeback fraud. Mm. Not necessarily. Have. So. Uh, so from what I that found out, yeah, from what I saw, payday is integrated with a lot of third party partners, but yeah, this mama is able to use because they don't coins. use third party partners yeah. because mm. they use stable coins. Mm. Uh -huh. So it's a, it's a very interesting uh, collaboration, yeah, user base of payday with the infrastructure of, of Bitmama and Changer. Yeah. Okay, guys, we've 
we we address a lot of topics today, and there are a few mentions. Uh, Nasir uh, Rufai, the is it Nasir or Nasiri? Nasir. 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 <laughs> 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 Nasir El Rufai has launched a $100 million VC fund. Will you collect money from him? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he has launched, but he has not raised it. Let's be sure. Let's be... He has... He, has, they, he announced it. It doesn't mean the $100 million is there yet. Yes. That, hey, is, we have to be very <laughs> deliberate about how he we report these things. He's bringing yeah. just two M of See, his guys, money. Of his eh? He said he's bringing two M of his personal money. Of his personal money. Yeah. So that's the only money that is available yeah. now. So it's only two M that's in that phone right now. You know why they announced this? Out thing? of 100 they, million. They yeah. announced it. Just so that two M. They now attract people that will now come and oh, put the money. Why are, you annou- why are you announcing? Just start with what you have. And your money. Yeah. You should anyway. have just launched a 2 million VC fund and invest 100 million. How much is 2 million? Ah, it's something. No. In small, small Where? startups. See, True, see, sure. ah, it's not bad. True. No. Yeah, so. If I see 50K now, collect now. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, yeah. Another interesting story. Call of Duty has launched a dedicated Nigerian server. Bolu will love that news. Yeah, Bolu is Bolu is all over this story. So I wonder how many users Call of Duty Mobile has in Nigeria. For them to have considered launching a, a server. Nigerian server, it's it's very very interesting. And I think they have a lot of yeah, users. I, they have a lot. I have one they of have them. Meetups. On, yeah, they have I have meetups. one of them on my WhatsApp status. He's always posting. They have wow. conversations. They have hangouts, and it's not just guys; it's girls. Really? Can we find out how many people are in that meetup community? I could, reach, find out? I could reach out to him, and, but they are a lot. They are it, actually, a lot. why this is very interesting for me is that I'm not, I'm not a gamer. Like, I get tired of games easily, but I've always known about games. I, mean, mm. I mean, from you can guess my age, but from the days of from the nineties. <laughs> Family comes next, Sega, ah. when PlayStation launched. I remember when PlayStation 2 launched. You could not afford the boy. One of my friends brought the magazine to school and we saw what PlayStation 2 was about. And then when PlayStation, I think it was in, either it was PlayStation 2 or 3 that they first launched uh, the network PSN where yes, you can now play multiplayer. Yeah. And at that time, you could, from Nigeria, you could not connect. Mm. <laughs> you could not. And then when you could then connect, you, uh, when eventually Nigerians could connect, you didn't have the data to do it. Then we started having unlimited internet, and you could connect, but latency. So they will be beating beating you up because by the time you press X, <laughs> <laughs> so. But now the fact that mobile gaming, I mean, first of all, that's barrier to acquiring a console. Although they are relatively cheap anyway, they make more money on the cities. That's barrier to acquiring a console taking off because you can play on mobile, mm. and then. Now that we now have servers, more people are, like I'm. I just want to see what is going to. The next thing I want to see is will they enable payments for for Nigerians? Mm. How much can they make? You know, because people want to buy guns and all the different modifications. So uh, this is mm. interesting for someone who always learned about games in my childhood. Imagine if we had mobile mobile phones then and this kind of yeah advantages. Maybe I would have gotten more into gaming. Who knows? Yeah, interesting. I, I mean, there there were some handheld devices, but I don't think there was Game Boy, there was PSP, yeah, Game Boy, yeah. and all of that. But yeah, uh, I'm person, so I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, please, um, guys playing games out there, or ladies playing games out there, don't let your parents know that you're buying guns <laughs> <laughs> with, with actual your actual people. money. <laughs> like, yeah, killing people. <laughs> yeah. Then I think finally, they said South Africa has. They intend to have 20% of new vehicles in the automotive market to be electric vehicles by 2025. I mean, I don't I don't know why this is an issue for South Africa, but let me just rest. You don't know why it's an issue. How do you mean? Like why is that a, why is that why do why do they care about having Ah, they should EVs? care with all the all load shedding and everything that's happening. EVs. Yeah, I mean, you know, you you you've been to South Africa. I don't know if you noticed one thing. Yeah. As you were landing on the plane. Did you see the roofs? No, I'm not a sure. A lot of solar panels. We, I arrived at night, like midnight. Oh, okay. A lot of solar panels because with this, they are load shedding. They just, they just say Nepal is taking light. They say load shedding. <laughs> <laughs> They're giving it a nice name. With the load shedding issues, more people are moving towards uh, renewable energy. Oh, okay. Right? So, more people, once people, that's the first, like that's like the entry point for them. From there, or the gateway, we probably start thinking about EVs and everything too. Hmm. Okay, I think the concern is, I saw a tweet yesterday that I saw 
that mentioned how much it costs to charge a Tesla. Mm. How much? Because Nepalite cannot carry it. <laughs> Your solar can carry it. Nepalite can't. No, not not power. Like you can't rely on Nepal to charge your car. That's that's what I'm saying. Okay. <laughs> yeah, but most most of them are going to solar. Solar. Yeah. So solar yeah. charges. In fact, it's a big issue now because um, Escom is it Escom, their biggest power provider is now trying to like get government to get government support to stop people from getting solar, solar panels and mm. get, <laughs> going off the grid. So people are, are just like that? we don't want to be connected to you anymore because they are not used to they are not like us. Mm. They didn't grow up with so this situation maybe, of maybe, power blackout. Maybe black it's the area I stay though, but yeah. in Kauteng, but load shedding like never takes light for a few minutes and they bring it you back. Not, you <laughs> stay in the hotel. Okay. They, they have solar panels. They probably have solar panels. You did not know they were switching yeah, to solar. So. Mm. The hotel where I stayed, the whole roof, the entire roof, because I was on the top floor, the entire roof was solar panels. You just didn't notice that they switched. Mm. Okay. I remember going to an office um, in, uh, was it in Santin? And I and the other Nigerian went to, we went for a meeting. And when it was, when it was time to leave, we tried to book an Uber. We were roaming. For some reason, the network wasn't going yeah, through. Yeah, the roaming is yeah. not reliable. So we were, de- we're there for like... And know somebody else was... Uh, depending on the location, we were there for like 20 minutes. Uh, do we have enough time? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I thought, we, I thought we agreed on long form now. <laughs> so, interesting story I want to share. You, you can either think it's racism or you can think it's... I, I don't overthink these things. But I wonder if it, it wouldn't have happened to a white person. Mm. So we're there seated for like 20 minutes trying to book. Unknown to us, there were cameras in the lobby. Mm. And then next thing we know, a black security guy comes in. Because it's a complex building, office complex, so different. And the guy comes out like, hey, hi, what, wh- how are you doing? Like, he didn't come like, what are you doing here? He was like, Hey, hey, who, who, what are you waiting for? Like, kind of, kind of in a friendly way, but you knew what he was doing. Mm. So he asked, that one was, my colleague was standing like, uh, like maybe five meters away, trying to find network for his own. We we're trying to see whoever's, whoever's phone yes. would be able to book an Uber first. And the guy answered that, oh, we're trying to book an Uber. Then he came to me too, to confirm the same thing. And next thing I knew, he went to the restroom and then he went behind he asked us which office we were. And then next thing we knew, we had gone to the office we say we're coming from. So I asked them, um, there are some guys there, are you guys with them? Say, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And next thing they came out, like, oh, what's going on? Now I get into my story because they're wondering, why. <laughs> like, oh, I'm like, we're having issues. Ah, oh, is the load shedding? I'm like, oh, load shedding? Like, because there was lights, right? Ob- obviously, solar or whatever. Mm. But apparently, just like here, if you've noticed, whenever there's no lights, mm. network is actually poor. I never connected it before. So they're like, oh yeah, anytime there's loose shedding, network is bad. They're like, oh. Hey. They just, then they just booked the Uber for us. So loose shedding affects network. network. Interesting. Yeah. It affects many things. Yeah, I've, I've <laughs> always, I, I've, I've noticed that from cellular, but I wonder why it affects my fiber at home. Where rain and network and, and power outage, if there's extended power outage, the fiber gets very, very slow and terrible. Why is that? <laughs> okay, yeah, it's uh, that's a different conversation. But yeah, I, do, I think, yeah, <laughs> before we get into it, <laughs> but the point that you know, the point I'm trying to make is I mean, they are just more and more of them are moving towards renewable, renewable energy because it's just ruining many things for them. Ah, okay, that makes sense. That yeah. makes sense. Okay, so uh, don't forget, um, we had a lot of discussions about acquisitions, about refocusing your markets, and uh, yeah, interesting conversations. And just imagine how much negotiation and how much conversations are going on behind the Bitmama deal and everything. So if you want to learn how to negotiate like a pro and close like a pro, don't don't sleep on Old School's high impact selling course. We are partnering with them. And for the sake of being part of this podcast, you're going to get a 20% discount on the fee. And like Nifemi pointed out a few weeks ago, it's being managed by instructors that have closed a combined $10 million in revenue, not VC fundraising. <laughs> so yeah, those actual revenue. <laughs> actual revenue. So 
you are going to learn a lot about negotiation, about selling your vision, and about acquiring the customer that you need to actually grow your business. So yeah, use the code TechPoint to grab your offer while it lasts. So yeah, don't forget to subscribe to our newsletters, FinTech Today, my newsletter, which is going to be having some changes very soon. Then the Workaholic, you've not changed the name yet. Okay, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> then there's TechPoint Digest, uh, our flagship newsletter led by Victoria. And yeah, very, very interesting. Eh? Equity merchants, obviously. Also going to be, there, there are some changes already there and so you must have noticed it, but it's going to be coming better and better and better and we're doing a lot of things internally to improve. And don't forget to like, share, subscribe and do all the things you need to do. And you can always reach out to, don't disturb them too much, but you can always reach out to me well. Malara and have conversations with them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, it's a bit rusty, actually. Yeah. It's been a while. Right. And if I may really share this um, South Africa story with me. <laughs> and the Lydia one, too. I should move <laughs> on. <laughs> yeah, don't worry. You should do this more often. We should be seeing yeah, you. Yeah, actually. I'll think about you it. Think about it, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, so you're, you're doing stuff around AI and analytics, right? So you yes, have conversations um, around that. Um, so I work as a marketing outcomes person. Okay. It's um, analytics intelligence. It's okay. a data analytics company. And we also try to, we, not like we try, we teach people in data analytics, um, data science, AI, with the flagship of AI Academy. Ah, interesting. Yeah. So we have an we AI Academy. When yes, did you we launch have an that? AI. Before or after ChatGPT? After, in <laughs> fact, I'm so, I'm we, <laughs> we were actually integrated with ChatGPT in 2020. Oh, so yes. you were using GPT-3. Yes, as uh, at the time. Open AI. Open AI. Yes. They've been around since 2018. That's what most people don't know. Yeah. They've Power been many apps that you use, actually. Exactly. <laughs> interesting. Interesting. <laughs> so, yeah, if you want to learn more about what Tumala is doing with <laughs> analytics, intelligence, please reach out to her. Of course. <laughs> yeah, we were yeah, at Tech Point. So, <laughs> all right, guys. Uh, thank you for joining us. And it's been quite a while. And I hope you enjoyed this episode. Of course, for those who don't like this long form we'll be splitting the episodes as usual to smaller bites that you can consume and uh, yeah we are appreciating all your comments all your talks your feedbacks and your fights if you fight me i'll fight you back <laughs> there's, not, there's no hard feelings and yeah you can find us on google podcast Apple podcasts wait google podcast is about to so youtube music yeah, they're going to YouTube music. It's, this, yeah. Is this is stressful yeah. <laughs> spotify uh, uh See, I, will I love it. I will boluna do Google Podcast. Apple Podcast. It doesn't <laughs> <mind>. <laughs> All right, guys. See you in the next one. Bye-bye. Yeah, bye bye.